Good morning and welcome to worship at Anlaby Park and welcome to a new year at Anlaby Park as well. So happy new year um, from me and from the rest of the leadership team. It is lovely to have you with us um, and worshiping with us this morning. This morning is an encounter service. It's our service where we share together as a church family. Um, and so we have a mission statement, some things that we want to achieve through Encounter. Um, and it's important that we remember this at the start of every service. Um, and so we see, oh, that's it. Oh, there we go. I'm up on the screen. There we go. So we see young and old worshipping together. Young and old people have different ways of worshipping. Some people like to be extravagant and loud. They like to run around and dance, make a noise. And some people like to be very traditional and stay and stand in the seats and be up and down. And that's absolutely fine. But we're worshipping together in our own ways. We're going to see young and old praying together. And one of the things that we try to do in Encounter is to equip certainly our families and our children is teaching them how to pray and giving them different methods of prayer. So we try different ways of doing that. And we'll do that this morning. We see young and old learning together um, as we hear our talk later on. And also it's important that we learn from each other as well, that we learn from children's freedom um, in worship and that also that they learn from us in how to act and how to behave and why we do those things that we do. And within all of that, we then see unity across all of the ages as we remember we're all here to worship God. So just a couple of things. You will have noticed that there are blankets, cushions on the floor. There's some fidget toys and there's instruments. They're there for anybody. If the children want to go and sit on them, that's absolutely fine. If they want to fiddle and fidget, that's absolutely fine. We just ask that a parent or a guardian goes with them. Um, but children are children and we're going to allow them to be children. So carry on as you have. If you want any of the fidget toys, any of the instruments, feel free. They're all dotted around trying to remember if there's anything else so this morning encounter we are encountering the wise men who went on a journey they set out with the best of intentions and then they got distracted along the way and we're going to find out what that looks like and how that how that um, impacts us and affects us today so i think yes we're gonna have our call to worship which is from psalm 105 with any look the words will be on the screen because i haven't got them on my phone or anywhere there we are. Well done, Katie. You're on board. Um, so Psalm 105 says this. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Some really powerful words and some words to live our lives by. Um, I wonder, Katie, could you go back to the start? And can we say that psalm together um, as we begin our worship? Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Amen. And so to start um, this morning, as we come into God's courts with praise, we're going to offer um, a welcome to everybody that's here. Now, we've not done this for since before COVID actually. So we've been doing the piece. We continued doing the piece in Encounter and we've used sign language. Sign language is good. Um, and if you wish to carry on using sign language, that's good. Um, but what we are going to do is have the quick piece that we started way, way, way back in 2019 or 18 or whenever we started Encounter. It's that long ago, I can't remember. Um, so Katie's going to put on the P's and the timer and we're going to go around. You've got 30 seconds to say peace to share in the peace with as many people as you can. Um, but if you wish to stay in your seat, if you wish to carry on doing sign language and have that bit of distance, that's absolutely fine. Um, so the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's go.
You've got 10 seconds left, no pressure. Two, one, and zero. How many times did you say peace and how many times did you say peas? That's the question. Um, <laughs> so as our Sam instructed us, we're going to come to the Lord. We're going to worship his holy name and we're going to sing his praise. Um, so we're going to join together in song and we're going to sing a come all ye faithful. Where the chorus says, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Um, and we're going to sing all six verses. We don't normally do it, but we're going to go and do it anyway. We're still in Christmas, so we get to sing the Christmas Day one. I decided in the planning meeting. So, <laughs> so if you've got a problem, that's fine, but that's absolutely fine. So we're going to have a go at singing it. Um, all I ask is that you help me remember the words of all the verses because I'm playing as well. During the singing of this song, we're going to take up our collection for the work of um, God in this place as well.
Good morning. So we're going to come into our time of prayer now. Um, And at the start, you should have been given a small bag with some chocolate stars in. If you've held on to them and haven't eaten them yet, I'm very impressed. So we're going to use them in our prayers. Um, You should have four stars each, and they represent each type of prayer. So that's adoration, thanks, sorry, and please. So what we're going to do, we're going to get into small groups with the people around us to say our prayers. And each star has five points on it. So for each prayer, we're going to say, we're going to think of five things to praise God for. Five things to say thank you for. Five things that we want to say sorry for. And five things we want to ask for. So as you hold your chocolate in your hand, you can say your prayer. So if you'd like to get into small groups. So we'll start with our prayers of praise and adoration for God, all the wonderful things that we that we want to praise God. So Lord, as we hold this chocolate star in our hands, we offer up to you these, our prayers of praise and adoration. And now all the things that we want to say to God for. Thank you, Lover. Thank you for animals that we can love. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say I'm going to say Lord God, we offer you these, our prayers of thanks. And now the things that we want to say sorry for. God, we are sorry for all these things we've offered up to you. And we thank you that in your grace you forgive us. And Lord, now we come to ask 
for some things that we need. Lord God, we bring you these things and we ask in faith, knowing that you hear us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Amen. Prayer and chocolate, tell me two better things that go together. I'm not sure I found them. <laughs> always find a reason. There's always a reason. Um, so we're going to say together the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. And there's pictures on the screen to help us. Some of the words have changed slightly. So this is about us teaching this prayer to our children and helping them to understand what we're saying. That's why the symbols are there. So they understand why these words are important. So let's say this together. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but save us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to the part of our service where we do um, an activity, something that helps us to illustrate the point of our service. Um, and so this morning, I've got a bit of a challenge for some people. And I'm looking for about five volunteers who can draw letter shapes. That, that bit's important. So five, letter, five people who can draw letter shapes. Um, so just line up at the front for me, facing the window. Anyone willing to give it a go? There we go. I've got two already. I need three more people. Thank you. That's another two. And one more, fab. Okay, so if you guys could all face the window for me, so it's just that window there, so stand in the line and face the window there. John is going to get a pen and a piece of paper. Okay, and Sue, is going to get an envelope with a word in it. All you've got to do, Sue, is write each letter, I'll tell you when to write each letter, on William's back. William is then going to pass the letter or the shape on to Conrad, who's going to pass it on to Rob, who's going to pass it on to John, and hopefully John is going to get the same word that Sue has at the start. It's Chinese whispers, but it's writing. <laughs> it's great. I might try this at school with the kids, they'll never forgive me. Um, <laughs> so, Sue, first letter when you're ready. If you need it again, William, just ask for it again. And then when you're ready, you can draw it on Conrad's back.
Go, go the other way, as if you were doing it. Yeah. Yeah, give it a go. And then just a big thumbs up when you're ready for the next letter, John. I wonder if anyone else can work out from what, from what we're looking at. Concentration in the room is impressive, I have to say. Impressed. Right. Have you got your words, John? <laughs> what? S T H R. What was the word, so? Star. Star. So that third letter that. Yeah, we can see how I can see how you got a H there. It's great. Well done, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. I wonder, now that we've seen it done once, would any of the children like to have a go? I've got one more word. Do you think you can do it? No, 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 we're not sure. That's fine, we don't have to do it if we don't want to. Would anybody else like to go on the next word? We're all rushing to the front. That's fine, we don't have to do it again. There is absolutely no pressure to do it again. Um, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to hear our story this morning. And as I've already said, it's about the wise men. It comes from Matthew chapter 2. And Barbara is going to come and... Matthew chapter 2, the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where was the Christ to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, 
Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. Thanks, Barbara. So I forgot to say earlier, our activity, and it links perfectly into the story that we've had, um, was illustrating an idea of expectation against reality. We expected um, the word star, and the reality was that we just didn't quite get it. The reality was just a little bit different from the expectation. And that's what the wise men saw. Liz is going to tell us about that later. We're going to join together in song again. We're going to sing one more step along the world I go as we think about the journey that we go on with God and how he guides us and helps us along that way. Um, I've just realised every song we've picked has five or more verses. So I'm going, to, I'm going to need people's help again just to get me through this one because I don't know all the words either. Um, so let's join together and let's really worship God as we consider how he's helped us along our journey. Step along the world I go One more step along the world I go From the old things to the new Keep me travelling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you Round the of the world I turn more and more about the world I learn and the new things that I see you'll be looking at along with me and it's from the old I travel to the new keep me traveling along with you as I travel through bad and good keep me traveling the way i should where i see no way to go you'll be telling me the way i know and it's from the old i travel to the new keep me traveling along with you give me courage when the world pray before we uh, we hear our words let's pray 
Lord God, thank you for your story and for your gospel. Uh, we ask that you would guide us as we listen and help us to hear your words. Amen. So the wise men thought they were following God, but they got distracted by what they thought they knew. So they ended up in the wrong place. As we learned from our activity just now, drawing on each other's backs, it can be hard to understand something when we can't see it. And that's often because we can't get past what we're expecting or the image we have in our heads. Our expectation of God doesn't always end up the same as the reality of what he's showing us or leading us to. And just like in the game, when we try and guess without seeing or we rely on what we expect or the picture that we have in our heads, then we're not allowing ourselves to be really guided. And we can't see what God is really showing us and telling us. In the story, the Magi were guided by God to Jesus, who they understood to be the new king of the Jews. They knew Jesus was going to be really, really special. And they knew he was going to change the world. They began their journey following the guidance given to them by God, and that was the star. They were following the star. It started off really well. But somewhere along that journey, they began to doubt it, or it became less clear to them. They thought they knew what a, a king should be like. Born into royalty in a palace surrounded by wealth and beauty. And that's why they went looking for Jesus in a palace. But in reality, Jesus was not born into royalty, surrounded in a palace, surrounded by wealth and beauty, but he was born in an animal stable, surrounded by sheep and cows. No human using their own logic would have traveled to Bethlehem, to a barn, to find the new king. They began to question where God was going them based on what they thought they knew. It makes me think once again of using a sat nav or Google Maps. I rely very, very heavily to get me around. And I'm sure we've all done it where Google Maps tells us the way that is quickest. And we think, no, that's not, that's not. I know where I'm going. I do it quite a lot, as Rob will tell you. No, 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 I'm going to go this way because I know that this is quicker. But of course, the trouble there is that I haven't accounted for any accidents or road closures or road works or lots and lots of traffic, which Google Maps will know because Google Maps sees all. But I don't know that. So I end up stuck or lost or having to go, to go back and it's all a lot more complicated than it needs to be if I'd have just listened to the Google Maps. God has all the knowledge and wisdom of the universe. He made the whole planet and he sees the intricate weave of time and space and possibility. His wisdom is infinite. And although our human minds can't understand his plan a lot of the time, we put our faith in him to guide us, we will end up safely where we need to be. But the thing is, with Google Maps, it recalculates. It takes my mistakes and it has another way for me to get there. For the Magi, even when they strayed from the path that God was guiding them on, even when they'd gone a different way, what they thought they knew was best. God still can guide them. 
and protect them on their journey. Because once they have found Jesus, they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod with the information about where Jesus was. So they took another route home. but sometimes it reaches a point where it just says make a u-turn stop go back don't do that I have got Google Maps to that point several times where it just says, no, just, just turn around, just turn around now. This is getting silly. The point is, we're never too lost for God to find us. We are never too far from grace. Although they strayed from the path, the Magi didn't find Jesus by accident. They didn't stumble upon the king by pure chance. They set out with purpose. And God guided them to where they needed to be. They wanted to travel all that way simply to worship the new king, to worship Jesus. They knew that this was worth traveling for, worth the risk and worth the hard work. This journey was everything. And in a sense, they were a little bit naive asking Herod in the first place about a rival king. They were so wrapped up in the excitement of finding Jesus, it hadn't occurred to them that Herod might not be very pleased about another king. The promise of Jesus was one that brought so many people so much hope, freedom to those enslaved, a voice to those usually ignored, justice to those who were mistreated, and a new system of thought that enabled love, acceptance, unity, and grace among people. But it also frightened those in power, the people who oppressed, the people who abused that power. King Herod represents the imperial powers, imposing and conspiring who were threatened by Jesus. A new king shows upheaval of the system, new hope to the oppressed, and therefore the downfall of those who are corrupt in power. So this is the time of year where many of us feel motivated, and full of hope. We want to commit and make resolutions <laughs> to upturn bad habits and challenge the things that hold us back, to rally up change, whether that's in our own lives or in the world around us as well. So I want you to just think about what God is calling you to this year. What is, where is he guiding you and what do you need to let go of in order to follow him and focus with faith? Because sometimes even when we start the year with the best of intentions, motivated and full of hope and optimism and willing to listen and be guided, we of course can lose our way and face challenges. We can be faced with doubts when we don't really understand God's plan and why he's guiding us this way. We can start to try and go our own way. It's important to continue to check in, to recommit and make sure that we are following God, that we're following that star, that light that God is guiding us with. And we can do that with the people around us, by reading the Bible, by checking in with God through prayer. Just to make sure that we are following God's words 
and God's guidance, not our own expectations of where we think he should be sending us. But the most important thing is to know that God will continue to guide us. Even when we get lost, even when we go the wrong way or we do something wrong or make mistakes, he will continue to bring us back and guide us and help us. He will never just leave us. Going the wrong way never means that God gives up on us. And it doesn't mean that we should give up. There is always, always hope. So let us go into this year, driven by this new hope from Jesus, motivated to stir up change with our eyes set firmly on God's guidance. Amen. So we're coming into our response time now. And as we usually do in these encounter services, we have um, a few different stations around um, where we can respond in different ways. So at the front here, we have some painting and some creative space where, and glitter, I think there's glitter, glittery paint. Glittery paint, even better, less gets everywhere. It doesn't get everywhere as much. So in this station, uh, we're coming here to name a moment of wonder and to give thanks to God for those things that bring us wonder. Um, the gift tags, that corner, <laughs> I couldn't see them. So in this corner, we have some gift tags to write on. Um, and this is for us to resolve to offer our gift this year in a particular way. A gift that might be whether we commit to supporting a charity or a movement or something that we want to commit to or offer God. Um, so you can write on there and keep it as a bookmark, keep it with you to remind you through the year. In the corner over here, we have some candles to light. This is where we can name some aspect of darkness and pray for light somewhere where we know God is so desperately needed. And in this corner here, we have some gift cards to write. And we also have some gingerbread men to decorate. Um, so we can name a companion on the journey and give thanks for their support. So we'll have a little bit of time to move around and respond as we feel comfortable. If you wish to remain in your seat and just respond in your own way, that's also absolutely fine. So we'll just take a few minutes now.
think are we on I'm on. Um, I think most of us are kind of finishing what we're doing. The activities will stay out for a little bit um, during our final song and during the um, as we come to the end of the service as well. So there's plenty of time to access all of them. Um, but as we come to the end of, of this little bit, let's let's pray together about all these different elements that we've considered this morning. God, we thank you for the star that led the wise men to you. We thank you that in the darkness that star brought light and hope and so this morning as we've considered areas of darkness and as people have lit and lit a candle um, i pray for each situation that those candles will represent your light breaking through into the darkness bringing hope and peace into each situation represented God, as the wise men came to you, they knelt in wonder. They recognised the child before them was more than just a baby. That he was going to change and transform the world. And so as we've considered different things that have made us go, wow. God, we give thanks for each and every one of them. For your work of creativity that has made them shine through. May we take that inspiration into our world and bring it to other people too. As they knelt, the wise men brought their gifts. And we too have gifts and things to offer, skills and talents and things that we want to do. And so for each person who has written their gift on a tag, God, I pray that they will take it and remember it, that they will use it for your service and your glory to make your name known in this community and in their families, with amongst their communities too. And finally, the wise men didn't travel alone. They kept going with each other. They encouraged each other on the journey, just like you encourage us. But God, we know that you send people into our lives to help us on our way too. So for each person who has guided us, we give thanks for them, for their support and encouragement. And I pray that you will bless them too as they continue their journeys together. And all our prayers, we ask and send in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final song together, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Be Thou ever with me and I with Thee, Lord. We're going to sing about the journey that we're going to go on, remembering that Christ is at the centre of it, guiding us on the way. And I do know most of the words for this one, so I might be all right. <laughs> i 
slates, my sword for the fight. Be thou my whole armor, be thou my true might, be thou my soul shelter, be thou my strong tower, be thou. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>